In this video, we're going to look at an example problem of using the limiting reactants to calculate the uh, amount of a product that'll be formed. And in this one, I'm going to go through one of the two approaches that you can use to solve these types of problems. So I mentioned in the last video when we introduced limiting reactants that there's two ways that you can think about solving these problems. And the first one strictly uses the quantities of the reactants and compares those to determine which one will run out first. Right. So let's look at this example problem it says nitrogen gas can be prepared by passing gaseous ammonia over solid copper at high temperatures. The other products of this reaction are solid copper and water vapor. If a sample containing 18.1 grams of ammonia is reacted with 90.4 grams of copper oxide, which is the limiting reactant? and how many grams of N2 will ultimately be formed, right? So this is really a two-part problem, right? So the, well, uh, really you can call it a three-part problem, right? So the first thing is we gotta write out the chemical equation and balance it, right? That's really the first part of what we have to do here, where a, a chemical reaction is described to us, we have to write out the chemical equation and balance it in order to proceed here. Uh, the second thing that we have to do is determine which one of our reactants, whether it's ammonia or copper oxide, is going to run out first, which one's going to be our limiting reactant. And then from there, we have to use that information to figure out how much N2 is going to be produced. Okay, so let's go through it here. So the first thing we want to do is write out a balanced chemical equation, right? So we we have the we know that N2 is going to be one of the products, right? So because it says nitrogen gas can be prepared by, right? So that's going to be one of our products. So our reactants are NH3 and CuO, right? Our ammonia and copper oxide are being used to produce the nitrogen gas, right? So we have NH3 plus CuO is going to yield N2, right? And they give us in the second sentence that the other products of this reaction are solid copper and water vapor, right? In fact, let's, uh, let's make sure we add in our phases here, right? So we have ammonia as a gas, we got copper oxide as a solid, right? and N2 gas is being produced, right? And it's telling us that the other byproducts are solid copper, so we'll put copper there as a solid, plus uh, H2O. So let me put this on another line so I'll have enough space here. So plus H2O, and it says water vapor, so that's gaseous water. Okay. So, uh, so we've written out our chemical equation, right? Uh, we have ammonia acting, reacting with solid copper oxide to produce nitrogen gas, solid copper and water vapor. Now, if we add in our stoichiometric coefficient, so we can go ahead and balance this guy. So we'll have a stoichiometric coefficient of two there, three here, three copper for the copper solid to balance out with the copper oxide and then a three here to balance out the last hydrogens and oxygens. So that gives us a balanced chemical equation for this guy. So we've written out the chemical equation for this reaction and we've balanced it. So now we want to figure out which one of our reactants is going to be the limiting reactant, right? So it says we have 18.1 grams of ammonia and uh, 90.4 grams of copper oxide. Now. One thing you want to resist doing, you don't want to just look at the masses and say, okay, well, there's less ammonia than copper oxide, so that must be the limiting reactant, right? Wrong, right? So you want to, you know, well, it, it could be correct, but it wouldn't be the right reasoning. So uh, these masses are not on equal comparable footing. We have to get them in moles, right, to be able to compare them and see which one is going to run out first. So it's a much more involved process than just looking at the problem saying, oh, there's less ammonia, so that must be the limiting reactant. That's not what we're going to do here. So first thing we want to do is convert both of these guys, both of these masses into moles, right, to see how much we have of each in moles. So for our ammonia, we're starting with 18.1 grams of ammonia. And its molar mass is 17.03 grams for one mole, right? So 17.03 grams of ammonia for every one mole of ammonia. And so when we do the math there, that means we have 1.06 moles of ammonia. And for CuO, our copper oxide, 
we have 90.4 grams of copper oxide. Our molar mass for copper oxide is 79.55 grams, right? Most of it coming from that really heavy copper atom, right? So uh, we have 70.55 grams of copper oxide for every one mole of copper oxide. Right, so that means we have 1.14 moles of copper oxide. Okay, so um, now what I like to do is just kind of put a little box around these guys. It's not that this is your final answer, right? Just so that you'll remember. These are the actual amounts that we have, right? All we've done here is convert the masses that we were given to moles. So we know how much of each reactant we have in moles, right? So I just kind of put a box around there just so that we can keep track of that. And I'll kind of start, I'll start to use a different color so that we can differentiate. Now that we have the amounts that we have, we want to ask ourselves how much of the other reactant would it take to consume all of that reactant, right? So, so for example, how much copper oxide would it take to consume 1.06 moles of ammonia? How much ammonia would it take to consume 1.14 moles of copper oxide? Once you get those amounts, you can compare them to what you actually have and determine the limiting reactant. So let's go through that, right? So we, we know we have 1.06 moles of ammonia. Now, for every, uh, so our, our mole to mole ratio between our reactants, for every two moles of ammonia, we uh, consume three moles of copper oxide, right? So there's that three to two ratio. So three moles of copper oxide are consumed for every two moles of ammonia. And so that means it would take 1.59 moles of copper oxide to consume all of the ammonia. Now we could actually make the determination of the limiting reactant just based off of that calculation, but I wanna show the other calculation as well, the, the calculation for how much ammonia would, it would take to consume all of the copper oxide, right? So we have 1.14 moles of copper oxide, again, using this same mole to mole ratio, right? Three moles of copper oxide for two moles of ammonia. And so uh, doing this calculation, we need 0 0.76 moles of ammonia to consume the copper oxide. Okay, so now, like I said, from either one of these, you could, just one of these calculations, you could determine the limiting and excess reactant. But what we wanna do here is just, I just wanted to show both of these uh, so that you can see the difference. So what we've calculated here is that it takes 1.59 moles of copper oxide to consume 1.06 moles of ammonia. If you look at the amount of, ammonia, of copper oxide that we actually have, we don't have 1.59 moles, we have 1.14 moles. That's less than what we need to consume all of the ammonia. That means that this guy, the copper oxide, is going to run out first. So this, the copper oxide, is your limiting reactant. And for the other reactant that's not limiting, we call it the excess reactant. That means there's going to be some ammonia left over, so it is in excess in this reaction. So we have an excess amount of ammonia. You can also figure this out from the second calculation as well. For our, the amount of copper oxide we have, it'll take 0.76 moles of ammonia to consume all of that copper oxide. So that means we have more than enough ammonia to consume all the copper oxide. So we know it's gonna be an excess and the other one will be limiting, right? So basically the approach here is using the quantities of the reactant, right, of the reactants, and comparing them to what you actually have in order to figure out which one is going to run out first. Okay, so we're, we're not done quite yet, right? So um, it's the last question that it asks us is how many grams of N2 will be formed. Now, this is crucial. What you want to do is you want to use the amount of the limiting reactant to calculate the product, right? When it asks you how much of a certain product is going to be formed, you want to use the amount of your limiting reactant, which means we want to use 
this amount of copper oxide to figure out how much N2 is going to be produced, right? Just like in our previous bread and cheese analogy, if the, uh, if the, if the bread's gonna run out first, it's going to determine how many sandwiches are going to be made, right? Same thing here. This amount of copper oxide is going to uh, limit how much N2 we're going to produce. So starting from that amount, we got 1.14 moles of copper oxide. And our mole-to-mole -mole ratio between copper oxide and nitrogen is going to be 3 to 1. So we have 3 moles of copper oxide for every 1 mole of N2. Right, so that's going to give us 0 0.380 moles of N2, right? And of course, we're not done because it says how many grams of N2. So we have to convert this guy from moles to grams. So 0 0.380 moles of N2. Using its molar mass, the molar mass of N2 is 28. So 28.0 grams of N2 for every one mole of N2. And so that's going to give us 10.6 grams of N2 produced. Okay, so uh, going through what we went through here, right? So we were given a chemical process, we had to write out this chemical equation, balance it. From that, we had some amounts that were given for each one of our reactants. We converted those to moles in order to figure out which one was going to run out first, determining our limiting reactant, which we then used to calculate the amount of product that's going to be formed in total, right? So, so basically, just this limiting reactant is so important. Um, you have to figure this out before you can really answer how much of your product is going to be formed, right? Uh, you have to know which one's going to run out first before you can say how much of your final product is going to be formed overall.